What happened to the driver that took the empty trailer and drove past Salt Lake City and didn't know that it was empty? This whole situation was a combination of positive events that contributed to a disaster. And a little background on the driver. He used to be a fisherman in Alaska, so he was really a hardcore guy. And when he moved down to Texas, he started driving trucks. So he had over 25 years of experience behind the wheel. So he knew the business in and out. And he was a very nice guy. Everybody in the company liked him. Whenever he was in the office, he would talk to everyone, always very happy, enjoying life. Overall, very good human being. So his solid experience and the nonchalant attitude was the first factor to the overall disaster. And that day, it was Friday, he got empty early in the morning in Chicago, so he was back at the base very early. He was able to bring the truck into the shop for an oil change and the tune-up, and these guys took him right away, so they were done in no time. He also wanted a trip to the West Coast, and I was able to get him three stops in the Sacramento area delivering Tuesday, so he had a lot of time to get the trip done. Top of all that, the warehouse said that they have all the shipments in the warehouse and they were able to load it right away. So everything seemed perfect. So our standard operating procedure was that when the trailer was loaded, the warehouse was supposed to put the bill of lading inside the trailer. So the driver was forced to open the door and check the bills against the load and how the load was secured. But because they saw that this driver was in the office and he was ready to hook up and leave, they didn't bother putting the papers inside, they just brought them into the office. And the next positive event that contributed to the overall disaster was the fact that the driver got the paperwork, it said 451, he walks outside and trailer 541 was parked right in front of the warehouse. So in his mind, he didn't even think twice. He thought this was the trailer because everything was going so smoothly. So there was no way in hell that this trailer would be parked at the other end of the uh, parking lot. It was right in front of him. He's like, wow, that's great. Let's hook up and go. The reason why he didn't check the seal number is because we did LTL, that's less than truckload. This means that we put smaller partial uh, shipments inside one trailer, so there is no seal on them. Basically, the local guys, they collect shipments throughout the week or even the same day. They bring them to the warehouse and the warehouse guys fill the trailer with partial shipments and just close the door, so there was no seal on it. So the trailer was right there, he hooked up to it, Everything seemed perfectly fine and he drove over the weekend and again, everything just lined up. So he, ha he was having a really good day. He was having a really good trip. So he didn't even think twice that something could go wrong. Until the moment on Monday afternoon when I called him and asked about the trailer number and that's when he realized that he hooked up to 541 versus 451. Given the fact that everybody liked the driver, that he was really experienced, he never had any strikes before, when everybody in the office found out about what happened, I don't think anyone was angry. Everybody was just laughing and they just couldn't believe that something like that happened, that an experienced driver that had been driving for 25 years, that never had any mistakes, would not open the door to check if the freight is there how it's loaded, and if it's secured properly. Before I tell you what happened to the driver, please subscribe to my YouTube channel just in case TikTok gets banned. I put all my interviews with drivers on the YouTube channel so you can see the full interview, not just the short clip. And going back to our story, um, of course, no one really was angry at the driver. We recovered the load sitting in our yard. So basically we had to find him a load from Salt Lake City coming back to Chicago. The driver was not paid for those miles, obviously. We charged him for the fuel that he burned from Chicago to Salt Lake City. He came back, he got loaded with another load and there was no other consequences to him, uh, except everybody was just making fun that he took the load of sailboat fuel all the way to Salt Lake City.